Throughout the 2012 season, we were granted exclusive behind-the-scenes access to the TT Legends racing team as they took on some of the toughest bike races in the world. For seven races, from Suzuka in Japan to Oscherschleben in Germany, from Le Mans to the legendary Isle of Man, we followed these ordinary men doing extraordinary things. John McGuinness is the Morecambe Missile, ex-Bricklayer and muscle picker. He's won the Isle of Man TT 19 times. Simon Andrews is the fearless young gun and a proven winner who's fighting back from a serious injury. And Cameron Donald, Australia's fastest plumber and two-time winner of the Isle of Man. Together, they are the TT legends. After the rain and cold of the Isle of Man, the team have flown halfway round the world to the ferocious heat of Japan, home of the famous Suzuka 8 Hour. Joining John and Cameron is British Superstock star Jason O'Halloran, standing in for the injured Simon. Having raced a Suzuka before, Jason has valuable knowledge of the track. The team take Japan's famous bullet train to the circuit, an experience in itself. Well, the pinning, feeling the pinning. It looks like Hilder Ogden, a bullet wound train. Suzuka is one of the most famous circuits in the world and the home race for many of the world's leading bike manufacturers, making success here a matter of pride. To actually go and race Suzuka is so exciting for me. It's something that I've dreamt of doing since I was a little boy. Suzuka's always a great atmosphere, something to do with the heat, the, 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 the sweat, the sheer passion. The whole Suzuka circuit is great track. Uh, very hard to go fast on, but once you get it right, it feels feels nice. Definitely uh, going to be a highlight of the year, I think. All I want to do is finish the event. It's been an achievement to finish it. Last year we didn't, you know, it was a bit, we struggled a bit, and we were out in the first hour, so we finish it this year, we've achieved something. Suzuka's pivotal. It's pivotal because we've got to go just up a little step at this point, bang home a proper result at Oscherslaver next round, and then finish things off at the Le Mans race. Jason's got good history here. He's, he's finished sixth uh, three years ago, which is an excellent position because it's highly competitive at this race. So having Jason on board is a big benefit, uh, joining the other two being the permanent team members, Cameron and John. And then Suzuka popped up, you know, as they needed a rider because Simon Andrews got injured at the TT. Uh, I've had a little bit of experience here at Suzuka before. Didn't know Jace well before, but he's become a good mate. Great young guy with a big future. Also new to the team is Harvey Beltran, standing in for race manager Neil Tuxworth, whose old racing injuries stop him flying long distances. It's quite an experience coming back here for me, really. Um, last time back here was in 1994 for Suzuka 8 Hour. For the team, you know, to be able to help and, and work and support them here, um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy, very pleased with it. The heat and humidity are a big factor in the race for man and machine with temperatures topping 40 degrees Celsius and 98% humidity. Just like Morecambe is, the weekend. Yeah. When you see all the locals all sweating, you know something's wrong, because they're all sweating as well, so it must be hot. About to jump out of the frying pan into the fire. You walk outside, you walk around in this heat, and you just burst into a sweat straight away. But you know, the heat's the biggest thing, definitely. I race in the UK, so we're not used to this, these sort of temperatures. So we've got a physio here, he just keeps feeding me stuff. I just said, you just keep feeding me whatever I need, so... John's fine, yeah, he, he's pretty low maintenance as he goes. John and the team's reputation draw a crowd wherever they go. And here in Japan, it's no different. The Isle of Man TT, it's... Uh, the most unique motorcycle race in the world. Make the effort to come over and, and experience it for yourself. I like the culture over here, I like the people, and, and I just enjoy being here. Everywhere you look, you can see people have got pride in what they do, you know, everything's immaculate. Even the toilets, they wash your bum, well, that's pretty special, so uh, nice thing about coming to Japan, you know. 
It's qualifying and the track is heaving. Cameron goes out first. picked up a virus, Cameron isn't feeling his best, and nor is the bike. All the riders are struggling with the brakes. I go up and I brake, and I always let the brake off fully open. Let the brake off, thing goes. And the lever was pushing back on my hand all the time. When I'm braking, the lever keeps pushing out. Cameron was saying that when this was all happening, he was getting that feel of the lever pushing back, but then it grabs again. Almost like pads are going like that. Despite the problems, the team qualifies 17th. Not bad in such a high quality field. It's race day, and the team grab a hearty breakfast before heading for the track. But it's not quite to John's taste. I don't, I don't mind fish, but as long as it's fish fingers or. Fish fingers? Yeah, you know, like fingers or something like that. I'm just going to keep it simple, you know. Simple food for a simple lad. All I've eaten is bits of steak, spaghetti bolognese, wieners. Nah, fish make you ill. After the problems in qualifying, it's time for race manager Russell to give a pep talk. John, you're starting because I consider you a safe pair of hands and we know you can do the job. Don't you worry about the times you're doing, just make sure you stay out of trouble. Bring the thing home after an hour and um, don't take any rest. And for the rest of you, you know self-imposed you've got target times. But it's a team sport and we want to make sure that you're not going too far into the risk zone. Jace, you particularly want to impress people, you're on the way up for your career, you're going to impress people with a top finish. Nobody's going to actually remember how quick you were in stint three and stint five. You just won't matter. What matter is seeing your name in the top ten on your portfolio. <laughs> My personal target, I'd like to see tenth place at the end. There's no pressure, we're going to achieve that through doing what we've done all year. Um, you, you know you can ride a motorbike, let's just do it safely and steadily and the result will come. Right, anything else anybody wants to bring up? This isn't Formula One. There's no onboard radio, so pit boards play a crucial role in the race. On the top it says TT, then the second line we've done the time. We'll keep that like that. Then the bottom line will be the countdown of laps. Yep. Unless uh, we get to the end, and then for in, I will just display in, nothing else. No, FOR, okay. did you put three, <coughs> three ins? Do you want to do that again? Or? Yeah, I can do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just say in, 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 in. I'll change, hang on. Yeah, righto, John. I'm just it's, getting in. You're going to get three, two, one, in. Right. Race day starts. Is that a lucky thing? New socks on race day. I have to always race with dad socks on. But dad, best day ever. Yeah, because oh, it's new. Okay. Four minutes. Keep it right. Um, well, yeah. I've been struggling all week with this head cold and I feel great today. I'm, first day I have me running a temperature and just feel feel back to my normal self and sort of wish I was starting the race now but I know John has got it more than in hand so my turn will come around soon enough. There's been a lot of discussion about the starting rider and the foot in the circle. So it's the front foot in the circle, the rear foot somewhere behind, behind the line. It. I'm not really a, a Linford Christie, am I? Nah, I've only got to get to there though. Anybody can sprint to there probably. Any further, then I'd be after to have an aspirin attack and stretch a jump.
the team watch on, John uses all his experience to stay out of trouble. That first hour is, uh, is crazy. I don't know what the right words are in Japanese, but it is do or die. The first corner is important as the second corner is as important as the third corner, and they're trying to win every corner. A lap is something in, the, in the, their far-sighted future, and let alone an hour. John pits in 15th place, and it's time for new boy Jason's first stint. First stint went well, we finished in 15th. John was very measured, just right, really. The pit stop itself went well, we are pleased with it. 16.27 uh, seconds, and that's amongst the best we've done, so everything's good for the race, a nice starting point. Great start, all right. great stop. It's all about risk management in that first one. We saw several other teams fall by the wayside. So we pitted uh, uh, after 50 and a half minutes of racing. Gab, it's always nice to get the release of tension out of the way from that first stop. Coming up in part two, can the team take the heat on and off the track? As soon as the uh, check flag comes out, I hope somebody's going to get some beers in because uh, I'm ready for one. But... With three hours in, and the team are in 13th position, but the conditions are far from easy. Get them in the sevens. No, they're not now, mate. Since the start now, they're doing nines, tens and elevens. The track temperatures are soaring, but the team have a novel way of keeping cool. Up it is. We've got two flat ones here. The idea is, as soon as they get out of the, off the bike, get the leathers down, get them in the pool, we can drop their body temperature a lot quicker. All we want to do here is just cool them down. It's not to, not to do anything to the muscles particularly, it's just to get their core temperature down. Measure your body temperature, just see if it's changed. I'm all red. You're over what? Trim it. Trim it. Up and down the paddock, the teams are struggling with the heat. For physio John, Suzuka is the busiest race of the year. The last hot race we had in Qatar, we recorded up to three and a half litres being lost in one stint. We counter that by them drinking before they get on the bike. And some of two of the riders here have got packs in their leathers, so that's 500 millilitres. We have the water and put into the freezer beforehand, so it's nice slush. And then um, we squeeze it into the backpack. That cools them down as well, so you get a big cold area in here. So that's quite nice. Hydration is probably more important in races like this than the massage. But say for the 24 hour races we do, the Boulder or the Le Mans, uh, temperatures aren't as high. So really the, the, the hydration becomes less of an issue and, and the sore muscles become a, a more of an issue um, because they're, you know, they're just pounding away with the, the muscles are working all the time and they do you know, hour after hour on the, on the bike. Obviously we hope they're fit when they arrive and we monitor that they don't get any uh, injuries or if they get injuries we try and resolve them as quickly as we can. After a relaxing massage, Cameron's ready for his first stint. Cameron pits and something's clearly wrong. Russell, the first three laps show the inboard. He showed the inboard. That's why I was riding around, I didn't know. I thought I didn't know what was going on. He had the inboard up there, in here. That went in, in, in. Thank you for staying out there. I'll, um, I'll sort him out for you, 
After four hours, 115 laps and 580 kilometers, the team have settled into 13th position. Back in the pits, Cam is recovering from his stint, watching replays of the fireball he's just ridden through. Nah, came out of the corner and the whole track was on fire with black smoke pouring out everywhere, so didn't know to just then it was Keo, so he certainly charcoaled it. When you actually breathe on the bike, down the straight, down here, it's spread off. It's like you're breathing, and it's like somebody's got a hairdryer in your face. Honestly, it's like somebody's just going. While the riders get a chance to cool down, spare a thought for the refueling team who must wear fireproof clothing. No, I'm a volunteer. I started off with Russell, the team manager. He found out I could refuel aeroplanes and decided I'd probably be quite good at refueling motorbikes. During the race, I'm the fireman. If it out catches, I'll put the wheels in and then uh, stand by for fire duty. Hot, sweaty <laughs> and very uncomfortable. Humidity is so high that you just can't stop sweating uh, and it feels absolutely horrible. Uh, I'm underneath the suit, I'm absolutely soaked. There's lots of ups that comes with the uh, discomfort, like, for instance, the fact that we're quite likely going to finish 10th or 11th at one of the greatest races in the world here today. The heat seems to be affecting the pit crew's concentration. They're caught napping when John comes in, wasting valuable seconds. Yeah, the faster riders passed me, I was like, even learning after so many laps, you still learn off the good riders, you think, oh, you know, you can just turn a bit in a bit earlier or turn a bit later. As the textbook race goes, yeah, I suppose that's made up. You can't come to Japan trying to get into these in their own back garden, it's definitely a tough thing to do, but uh, as soon as uh, the checkered flag comes out, I hope somebody's going to get some beers in because uh, I'm ready for one. But... As dusk falls on Suzuka, we're into the last hour and a half. The heat hasn't abated but the team have moved up to 11th. You know you do a TT? Oh, it's 10 times higher than any TT, ain't it? Doing that? Yeah. You know what I mean? For us it is. Yeah. If your average guy is doing a TT, you're probably harder. That TT's a piece of <laughs> that. Cameron takes the last stint. He must stay out of trouble and bring it home. With John and Jason finished, they can start to relax. Uh, that one's weird. Is that? Yeah. That's me. The helmet. Gear looks bling, not it? Is that a TT? Uh, Northwest. Check the paddock. <laughs> Big black cloud and bog everywhere. Cameron crosses the line in 10th place, bang on Russell's target. They're still second in the Endurance World Championship, but after good results in Suzuka, rival teams are closing in. Pretty special for me because I've done so many things. But I've never finished one of these. I never thought I'd ever finish one of these at four year old. We came looking for tenth. I think we've got tenth. It's a vindication of some great teamwork. A fantastic pit crew have uh, performed almost faultlessly. And uh, John McGuinness uh, is done average. <laughs> uh, no, a great job by all concerned. Very pleased to be part of it. And I look forward to taking the race to us. I believe you're second in the World Championship still. Well done. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a drink and just relaxing, really. Uh, what I'm not looking forward to is packing this lot away.
As the guys head home, there's time to reflect on one of the most iconic and toughest races in the calendar. That's the fastest I've ever run from the edge of that track to the boat. We couldn't see it over pit wall. I have to wait for the footage. That was fast, mate. Just, that was like a blur. My legs were like a hummingbird wings. Like steel springs. I would just run, forest, run. You see me bouncing through the gravel? Hey? No. You see me bouncing through the gravel? I ran on through the gravel there, just went in a bit hot. Messed up my braking marker a bit, went in just a little bit too quick. Probably could have made the corner, but thought it was safer to just run across the sand, although it's a bit softer than I remembered, so had to uh, get on the gas and paddle my way out of there, but got the bike through there without falling over, so that was the main thing, but... Taking that chequered flag, that was very, very special. It's just a big release of emotion, you know, because, you know, it's done. You brought it home in one piece. It was a real special turning back up pit lane and, and riding up and, you know, throwing a few high fives to the crowd and seeing my team and, and everyone there just sort of rejoicing in the fact that we've got to finish. Next time on TT Legends, the team head back to Europe, where the racing diet is more to John's liking. But there's trouble in the pits. You've got, got to get above it all and drop it. That makes me crazy. I don't like it.